Hey, hey, Tony Gash, I'm jumping in and shoot that video I was just telling you about now. Do not buy anything right now. Now, see, listen, one of the things I do when I go to reward myself for just hard work, man, this little homeless right there, three homeless people, Lord Jesus, you better count your blessing. That man laying on the ground, mouth open, knocked out. I don't know if that's if he knocked out from a high or he just getting some good sleep. I don't sleep that good in my bed. This man on the ground, mouth open, slaw coming out. Y'all forgive him. Boy, you better be thankful. You got a bed to lay in. Listen, do not buy anything right now unless you absolutely need it. Meaning don't finance anything right now. Not a house. There's a lot of people trying to buy a house. And there's a lot of people trying to buy cars. Do you know I was looking at cars just because I'm like, man, listen, I work hard. What am I going to get myself for Christmas? I done work hard. I done sacrificed. I done slaved. I done served. What am I going to get myself for Christmas? I'm looking around, looking at this car. Went looking at this car. I was going to trade in the car that I'm in. And the car got a scratch on it. My car... You can't see the scratch, but my neighbor was weed whacking on the edge of the road, and I was driving by. He had on headphones. His butt go, his butt slang into the road. He spins into the road, like turning around instead of looking to see that he in the road now, standing on the edge of the road. He swang around and he hit my mirror and the side of my car with his weed whacker. And the, the weed whacker hit him in the rib and he fall to the ground. He wanted me to be at fault trying to get some money after he seen my car. But the police said, sir, you at fault. He driving down the street. You you doing this on the side of the road. You supposed to be aware of where you at. You going in his right away. He didn't drive up on the curb and hit you in your lawn. And so because of that and us calling the police, you immediately get a car fax. I didn't have to have a car service. I had it buffed and I didn't get the little scratch fix. But immediately it goes to Carfax when the police file a report. So that take off 20% of the value. So that so just to put that in, if your car worth 30,000, now it's gonna be worth 24,000. That's 6,000 is a lot of money. Now imagine if the car costs more, the more it costs, that's the bigger that number is. So, but still I got equity in the car, even with that being taken off, I still have equity in the car. And so I was getting ready to trade it in. Now my credit, when you hit 700, when you buying a car, 700 is like you could walk on water because you buying cars, they'll finance you for a car way, for way less. I mean, you, your credit on, you don't have to have credit, you can have bad credit to get a car to get an asset to get a house which they call an asset is totally different and that right there let you know part of the sham is they'll let us buy a depreciating item but not let us buy an appreciating item at the same amount of income and the same amount so it's like this they will let me buy a hundred a two hundred thousand dollar car with a 500 credit score but they'll give me crazy interest but they will not let me buy a $200,000 home with a 500 credit score. The same bank. The same bank. Ain't that some? Think about that now. So it's like, why would you let me, why would you take the risk of me getting a car which is going to be worth less if I can't pay the car note and you got to repossess the car and then sell it? It done lost 20, 30% of value when I drove it off the lot but won't let me get into a house at that same price with the same credit and all of that when the house gonna retain its value or go up if you gotta foreclose the house if you gotta take the house back and that's how they do because they don't want you to gain land it's very weird how, how the law is written but i want you to think about this now here i am with good credit and well over 700 
and the people say right now your car interest will be 9.9 percent and credit better than when i bought this car and this car would have been at like 2.2 percent but the dealership when you when you don't go to your bank when you go to the dealership they add points to it they typically add about two points meaning two more up your interest rate by two so if the bank offer 2.4 to them to the dealer the dealer gonna tell you 4.4 and because 4.4 still sound low you say okay cool so the dealer said 9.9 but the bank really offered 7.9. But even 7.9 is really high interest. So right now the bare minimum interest with my bank is 5, 5 5.7 or 5.9. Like that's the bare, that's with excellent credit. So that is a sign right now that you should not buy anything because you're going to end up paying way more for it. And what I'm realizing is the people who they selling to right now is the mega rich. Well, no, not even mega rich. It's the dumb rich. <laughs> it's the dumb rich who they selling to right now. Jeff Bezos said, don't buy anything right now. I'm talking about houses, cars, and this is now about trillion now, now. Say, don't buy nothing right now. Why you think he said that? because of these rates but here's the thing what i realized too if we buying up houses and cars right now it ain't gonna be no reason for the bank to ever reset the only way the bank gonna reset is people stop buying stuff and then they got to incentivize us and they're gonna start pumping out money printing more money and then they're gonna drop them rates and then they're gonna say listen we need y'all start shopping again but if you finna be shopping with these high interest rates, like, hey, well, we gonna keep this inflation right where it's at. We didn't elevate it to a new level because people still spending their money. And so listen to me, this is not the time right now, unless you walking and you ain't got no other option. If you got a car, keep your car. If you got a house, stay in your house. Don't buy nothing right now because the interest rates is crazy. And if you do buy some, just understand you finna pay more for it. You paying more for it. And I talked to a guy yesterday, Cause I was looking at a car. I talked to him yesterday and I say, well, I don't, I don't put money down on cars, you know, at this here level, because if I'm buying this kind of car, I ain't, what is $10,000 been approved to the bank with my car buying history? It ain't like I'm coming out of, you know, this level car here and trying to jump to a car that costs five times as much I already shown and proven I got 100% payment history on the cars that I have financed that's in the same level. So $10,000 down payment only gonna take off $180 off my monthly bill. So why would I take off $180 at this hill level when that 10,000, I can invest that into my business and turn it into 100,000? Don't make no sense for me to take ten thousand just to knock off one hundred and eighty dollars when I could take and flip that money. So, but they want a down payment, and I say, well, the reason why the bank want a down payment is because y'all got a markup on the cars. So all the cars right now is marked up. One of the cars I looked at from the MSRP, which normally when the market is normal, you get a percentage, ten to twenty percent knocked off up to 18% typically knocked off the MSRP. The MSRP, when the market was normal back in the day, that was just like a that high number, that like the number that be on the back of the door in the hotel room, be like 2,500 a night is what they could charge, but you paying 150 a night. I'm like, where do the world do this number come from on the back of this door? And that's how that MSRP used to be. And then it got to where the MSRP, that's what you paying. But they could discount money off there because the manufacturer is giving them a discount. That's how the dealers make money. The manufacturer gives them a discount. And so now 
he'll go to MSRP at this number, they marking it up 10%, 20%. They marking the thing up. Now, there's dealers with certain cars, especially like luxury cars, that's being marked up 50%. Being marked up 50%, now. More than 50%. Being marked up 60%. I saw a car that the MSRP is $170,000. And they are selling the car for $280,000 all across the board. The man told me that's a $90,000 markup. So, so really the MSRP a little higher. He's saying it's $190,000 or something like that. And so 180, if it's 180 in the car MSRP, no, if it's 280 and the car MSRP is 180, they marking it up $100,000. A 50% markup would just be 90,000. So that'd mean 270. But they're trying to say it's so scarce right now and these cars not being made enough. And the reason why the car is not being made enough is because the manufacturers can't get all the parts that they need. Still because of COVID, they can't get everything they need. The supply chain is still backed up. Stuff is still out of whack. And they're not trying to produce and produce because they foresee a shortage coming they foresee a recession coming so they got they got knowledge that we don't have and so i'm like the car at the end of the day is still only worth that msrp so if you selling it for ninety thousand dollars more if somebody buy that and then they want to trade it in the bank and even the dealer only going to offer what the car is really worth on the MSRP. They're not finna offer you no markup. And I got a car that I bought with a markup and I'm going to take it and get it. I'm going to take and get it appraised and see. And I shouldn't have bought it. But my wife, somebody had hit my wife in the other car. So I was like, still just getting it fixed and all of that. It's, uh, I got a thing on the Carfax now anyway. So let me just go ahead and they, well, actually, they actually didn't have a Carfax. So I said, let me just go and trade this car in. And they showed what they got over. And I went on ahead and did it. Took an L, but it's a car that I'll keep. So eventually it'll balance out. It'll balance out as things settle. It'll come back around. But here's the thing. Right now, you're going to get in the place because it's you're going to get a stimulus check or you're going to get some type of little bonus and then you're going to say what well, hey or come february january february you, you're going to take and get a two thousand three thousand dollars and your car working fine and you say oh i want to go get a new car if your interest rate is over four percent the market still ain't reset if it's over five percent for sure the market still ain't reset. And you got to look at that interest rate. You got to ask it because now they're showing you a payment, but they're not showing you the interest rate. And they're doing that intentionally because they know that interest rate look astronomical. And so they're just showing you the payment. And I'm like, well, what's the interest rate on that? They don't want to say that. But when you ask them, they got to tell you. And what you're going to hear is they finna tell you 10%. And some people, they telling more. Some people, they got you at 17%, 20%. And they just showing you a payment. And you're like, oh, this payment is affordable. Yeah, the payment is affordable. But you paying that payment for 84 months. You done signed up for 72 months or 84 months. Take that monthly payment and multiply it by 72 or 84, whichever you done signed up for. And now you finna see how much you paying for that car and you about to see that you now about paying double for your car that you didn't really 100% need. And so you almost better off saving the money, saving the money, saving like a madman and going and buying your car cash and doing it that way versus paying double if you don't absolutely need a car. 
And so that's why the financial people tell you don't buy a car unless you can buy it cash because they realize when you finance it, you paying for your car and a half or your car and a quarter. And some people paying, you paying for two of your cars. And so I, I start to do the math on all on the cars I was looking at if I was to finance. And I'm like, man, I would be paying $100,000 more for this car. And so I want you to think about this now and really be mindful and, and understand in the times like this, the way that the world stays afloat is from the financially illiterate. From those of us that don't really understand a credit score, don't really understand an interest rate, and don't really understand markups. And that's why when you get ready to go look at something, even if you want to buy a house, look at where that house was two years ago. The value of it two years ago, three years ago. And then you're going to see how inflated things are. But everything that goes up got to come down. So the same way these car values have gone up, right now what the dealers are doing, because it has not been mandated across the board that the market is going through a reset and that we are in a recession because it's not being said by the mainstream that we in a recession prices are being decreased i done seen cars get decreased luxury cars get decreased by fifty thousand dollars that show you how much of a markup it was because they ain't gonna lose no money on it now so for them to be able to decrease about fifty thousand it's like whoa but you really was trying the system but then they realize well whoa ain't nobody buying this because the people who can afford this got financial literacy and that's how they got to the position that they in they financially literate and so what we're going to do is we're going to depend on to keep us afloat we're going to depend on the rappers and the athletes and the crypto millionaires which that then the bottom that fell out of crypto and the real estate millionaires we're going to depend on the people without a college education without a father without a good upbringing we're going to depend on the people who come from nothing and we're going to hold on to these numbers that are inflated from covid and then we're going to sell to them so what you have to realize is when a car is thirty thousand, and they sell it to you for thirty thousand, a brand new car they only paid fifteen thousand they only paying 15 to 20,000. They might be paying 21,000 for it if they selling it to you for 30, brand new. And if that's the MSRP. So they might be paying 15 for it. And that's how off that MSRP in a normal market, the car that say it's 30,000, they they could give it to you for 25 cuz they making money because of the discount they getting from the manufacturer. So now the discount is still the same for them. That's how they stay in business. The discount still the same, but now this $30,000 car that they already making 10 to 15 K on, they now selling it for 45. So now the reason why they selling it for more is not just about the scarcity, it's because about less people buying. And the industry ain't making them as many cars because they realize less people finna be buying. So it's no sense for us to be pumping out all these cars because we finna go through a recession and people ain't gonna have no money to buy. So why flood the market with all these cars that's gonna have to get shipped back to us by the dealer? Because they ain't gonna be able to get off of it. Or they gonna have to call us and ask us to take even less money because they got to mark the price down way down just to get off of it. So right now, it's a lot of pressure in the hill market with the houses, with the realtors, and with the salesmen. They trying to sell, 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 and they trying to twist your arm and they trying to make you get it. They trying to make you get it real fast because they know that in a few months, and I talked to the man, to a general manager, he said, listen, the market is very different than what it was six months ago. Meaning that banks, they want a down payment, the interest rates are high. So I say, okay, if the market very different, then went up that much in six months, that let me know in six months, it's finna go back down. And when it go down, it might go down lower than what it was before. Because they're gonna have to reset us all the way up and then we ride it back up. You 
go to the bottom and then you get rolled all the way back up to the height and then you take all the way back down to the bottom and it's just a cycle it's just a cycle every eight to 15 years it's gonna be a recycle so listen i'm sharing this with y'all now I ain't no financial expert sharing this with you as your brother somebody out here who be out here testing and seeing in the market and so you might not even be looking for nothing right now but then you what you gonna do you might not be looking for nothing but then you turn on the you turn on the tv and you see that commercial hey come on in to john smith kia we got the special for you. We will give you top dollar for your trade-in. We're gonna give you $1,000 more than what your trade-in is worth. And that's cause they finna sell it for $10,000 more than what it's worth so they can afford to give you more than, uh, give you a thousand more. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna give you three months, no payments on your car. You know why they can afford to do that? Cause you finna pay double for the car when you start paying that 20% interest they finna give you versus the 4%, the 3% that you would have got in a normal market. So now because and and because they get the markup, they get the money from the markup. So if the bank say, "Listen, we can get this person 7%, we can get this person 9%." They come tell you 18%. They come tell you just pin on the state. They come tell you oh 12, 17, 20 22 my wife told me i had a car that i was paying 22 percent interest on she thought i knew what interest was because she knew what it was she didn't realize i was dumb she didn't realize i was financially illiterate i ain't know what the interest rate was so you see what i'm saying that's who they play on and guess what it was a brother who sold me the car it be your own people it be the other people too but this man ain't even say, uh, well, brother, you probably might not want this one because it's 22% interest. That brother sat down and had me sign a 22%. Listen, these people will get you right now. And then what they do, what they do, and this is what, see, most of the time we don't know. So they'll say, well, yeah, I recommend doing this. I recommend doing this because this is a financially smart decision. This is the best time to get in. You got to hurry up and get this because this is going to be gone very fast. So I, I need to know within the next 20 minutes because I got a lot of people that want this car right now. So you need to hurry up and make this decision. So how is that financially wise to make a decision on tens of thousands of dollars in 20 minutes? How is that financially wise? But that's what they'll tell you. That's what they'll tell you because... They want you to be the dummy because they got to pay their bills. And when people got to pay their bills, they don't care who they taking advantage of. They don't care what kind of position you getting put in. They don't care what your finance look like. They do not care that you're going to be upside down in six months. They don't care about none of that. So you need to look at the price of what you're getting ready to buy. If you got to finance anything, look at the price of what you're getting ready to buy figure out how much of a markup that price is and then look at the interest rate of what you're getting ready to buy look at the interest rate and then look at how many months they trying to give you if you notice if you want a car and you tell them 48 months oh they don't like that boy huh 48 months why not do 72 or 84 because the payment is lower and it's like, since when do you care about me and my household and my payments being lower? But you know, if I do 72 months or 84 months, you make more money because the finance charge is much larger the longer the payments are being paid. But when I cut it down to the bare minimum that y'all willing to do, which is 48 months, you now finna make the least amount of money on your interest rate markup that you doing from the bank. And they won't show you what the bank offered you. That's why whoever you depositing your checks to, you need to go to them and say, I want to buy this car or I want to buy this house. How much? What can you do for me? Because I'm bringing my money to you. So do something for me. And then they will give you the approval letter, letter that you take to whoever you buying from to let them know you already got financing. Boy, they don't like to hear that, boy. And when you do that, especially at a car dealership, they say, oh, well, well, can we run it through 
we'll send it through the same bank but we'll we want to process it for you reason why because the bank got to do the lending. so the same way the manufacturer is doing a deal for the dealer the bank doing a deal for the dealer and that's how that work that's exactly how that work right there so hey let's turn on this here now and do not buy nothing right now that you got to finance and even if you can afford to buy it cash do not buy it if you see that the price is inflated it's right now people buying houses at the height of the market when if you got that money cash or you can get approved for that if you wait six months to 12 months then see it ain't gonna go up no higher than this and that's why it's already starting to go back down even with Zillow, when you check on Zillow, the, the value of my house then changed on Zillow by $70,000. It went down $70,000. The value on my house went down $70,000 on Zillow. And that's just a little rough estimate over the last few months. That, that lets you know right there. But guess what though? The value of my house is nearly five hundred thousand dollars more than where i bought it at seven years ago so i want you to understand that it go up and it got to go down so right now is not the time to be buying stuff you need to wait until it go down wait until it go down then you get to see but hey this tony gaskin god bless you we're gonna talk soon